have a quorum. We have uh, called the meeting the September 16th. Just hold on one second. I'm just uh, getting some more people on board here. Sims and their four children got out just in time, but they're home like so many. Somebody needs to mute. I'm hearing a television program. Where you saw those flames come. All right, hold on. Thank you, whoever that was. No, it didn't work. All set? Um, all set. Mm. Thank you. Welcome to the Wareham Conservation Commission meeting on Wednesday, September 16, 2020. We have in attendance Alyssa Hurd, David, <clears throat> excuse me, David Hall, Mary Taggart, Jim Smith, Sandy Slavin, Associates Carol Mallison, and Ron Bessie. Did I miss anybody? Okay, guess we'll start with our first hearing. Okay, we've got a notice of public hearings pursuant to the provisions of the Wareham Wetland Protective Bylaw Division 6. The public hearing will be held on Wednesday, September 16th, 2020 at 6.30 p.m. on the notice of intent for Susan Dobratz, care of JC Engineering Inc. 2854 Cranberry Highway, East Wareham, Mass 02538. To construct a single family dwelling located on Assessor's Map 106, Lot 19A, 17 Pond Edge Trail, Wareham, Massachusetts. Thank you. Who's here for this hearing? Good evening, Brad Bertolo, JC Engineering. Thank you, Brad. Mr. Bichette, you're up. Okay, so the project site is at 17 Pond Edge Trail in the Crane Landing subdivision. Um, and this project involves the construction of a single family dwelling in the buffer zone to an isolated wetland. Um, this application is being filed under the town, the town wetland bylaw only, um, as the wetland is not jurisdictional under the Mass Wetlands Protection Act. Um, so the project involves the construction of a single family dwelling. Um, the proposed limit of work is approximately 30 feet from the edge of the isolated wetland, which is an existing ditch um, that's shown on the top part of the site plan. Um, the septic system that's proposed is outside the buffer zone to the wetland. The um, site was not staked out in terms of the house location. Um, so I know there was a member or two that um, had an issue with that, we, we don't need a DEP file number for this project since it's only being filed under the uh, town wetland bylaw. Um, so as far as the project itself goes, I had no issues with the proposed project because it is outside the 30 foot no activity zone and they are proposing hay bales and silt fence um, around the limit of work, but it's up to the commission as to what you wanna do regarding getting to see the site where the house is gonna be actually situated. Thank you. Um, Brad, any comments you'd like to add? I pretty much summed up the uh, project. I was unaware the commission wanted to uh, see it staked out. It's been a while since we've had it staked during the, the meeting process or the process of the meeting. So I apologize for uh, not getting that done. Um, but I guess it's up to the commission if they want to see it or not, but it is outside the uh, 30 foot buffer zone as stated by Dave. And I have to admit, I'm certainly not going to trump through the woods. You can't see this house proposed site from the road at all. And it is wooded. Correct. Correct. Okay. I'm just going to ask the, um, members, if they have any questions, so I'll go around the board here. Alyssa, you're up. Thanks. Any questions? None. Okay. David? Did we lose no, David? I, uh, no, I don't okay. have any questions. Mary? I was up there and it was just a couple of orange stakes near the edge of the road, if that was the right place. 
That was the right place, but okay. the, house the house was quite a distance in from the road. So what you saw are the stakes were stakes inside the ditch. All right, that's where the ditch is. Yes. All right. Right, Brad? Yeah, there are, there are stakes all over the place right now. Some property line, uh, some showing control out on the street, uh, but, but no stakes locating the house itself. But the property line is delineated, so that that is can be seen in the field. All right, okay. I was in the right place, at least. You yeah. were in the right place, Jim. Any questions? No. Carol. No. Ron. No. The ditch is nowhere near the house, is it? Uh, forty feet from the house. Now, what type of what what type of water goes down that ditch? Because it looked damp. It was damp. It's uh, a basically it's a, a drainage ditch at the moment. It's at the low point of this subdivision, and it captures a lot of surface water runoff. But it's there's no inlets or outlets. It's just picking up surface water runoff uh, from the woods and some most likely from the street on Pond Edge Trail. This, this ditch, uh, I, I'm assuming that this ditch was the same ditch that went right across where the roadway was and it was filled in at the time the road was constructed. And in that area was not considered isolated wetlands. Um, just, just a small section that's still considered isolated uh, on this property. Is there um, any, I thought I saw a depression when I looked into the woods, is that true? Yes. Do you have to do any filling, Brad? Uh, yes, I'm, I'm uh, trying to equalize the amount of cut and fill. So utilize some of the sand up by the septic system and, and depress that grade uh, uh, about two or three feet and will require about two or three feet uh, around the dwelling itself. Sorry. Come on. Call you back. I'm on a conference call. <laughs> okay, wait a second. Um, Dave, I got an issue with, uh, we're on the same call as the Charter Review Commission, Charter Review Group. Yes, I know that. I spoke to Matt and he was kind of shutting down their meeting because apparently we can't run both meetings at once. So that's why our meeting is running and theirs may not be running. So Judy should call Matt. Yes, he he, had, he was basically going to have to shut that meeting down um, because apparently he felt that the uh, system through the towns uh, hosting it couldn't run two meetings at the same time. So therefore, he was going to shut theirs down since we have scheduled public hearings. Okay, Judy, did you hear Dave? Uh, sorry, I'm in. Uh, I'm in the middle of a public hearing. Maybe you can get a hold of Underhill and see if he has any recommendation, because I need to continue with my public hearing. Yeah. Wait a second. Well, I still have Judy on my other line. I have a question. Will the change of the uh, landscape affect how that runoff from the road is handled? Uh, no, I don't believe so. I'm providing a uh, pipe uh, in the location of the driveway so that any water that's running off the street will continue to flow under the driveway and reach the, uh, the, the remaining portion of the drainage ditch. Where does this drainage ditch flow? Where's the water flow in the drainage ditch? 
it's it's isolated. So there's no inlet or outlet. It just captures water and then uh, slowly infiltrates. Okay, so it's a mosquito ditch. For the most part, yes. Okay, Judy, all set? Okay, wait a second. So I'm going to continue with anybody online that would like to speak for or against this project. I'm seeing, I'm hearing none. Sandy. Um, yes. Excuse me. Um, the, so am I understanding that the, that deep, steep ditch that was sort of as you go into the woods there, that, that that'll be mitigated by a pipe and some landfill? Brad? Uh, in the locate, the, the driveway is going to be crossing that ditch. <laughs> So to allow the water to continue to flow as is, a pipe will be installed at the base of that ditch before fill is placed uh, that will be level with the top of the ditch. The ditch itself is about three to four feet tall uh, in the location of the driveway. So yes, our water will allow, will continue to flow uh, through it. And that would be runoff off of the street itself. Sorry, I'm on the all set. Bye. Sorry. Alyssa, did I answer your question regarding the yes, I just want to know, you know, this drainage easement, there's a drainage easement. I'm not exactly sure what that that means for this plan. Does that mean you're not using all of the drainage easement, you're just using a part of it? It was, uh, this subdivision was uh, constructed using low impact development. So instead of utilizing catch basins and subsurface infiltration, a lot of the subdivision has uh, paved roadways with no Cape Cod berms or curbs. So surface water runoff runs off the roadway into the shoulder and throughout the subdivision, there are a number of low depressions that they utilize as uh, drainage easements, basically areas that are intended to capture uh, surface water runoff. Okay, thank so you. So this happens to be one of those areas um, on this property. Okay. I hear no one, um, I've heard no one wanting to comment on this project. So if you would like, I need a motion to close the hearing. So moved. David, Jim seconded and all, I think Jim seconded, all in favor. Uh, Alyssa. Yes. David. Yes. Mary. Yes. Jim. Yes. Sandy. Yes, the hearing is closed. This is a, a notice of intent. So I gather, Dave, we need a standard order of conditions. Um, yes, that's correct. I need that motion. Move the standard order, order of conditions. Thank you. Second. I have a second by Jim. All in favor, Alyssa. Dane. David. Yes. Mary. Yes. Jim. Yes. Sandy. Yes. So Brad, get a hole and work with Dave before you start any work on it. Okay. We'll do. Thank you. Thank you. Six, please. Oh, that's for me. All right. We're going to have another notice of public hearing pursuant to the provisions of the Massachusetts Wetland Protection Act General Laws Chapter 131, Section 40, and the Wareham Wetland Protective Bylaw Division 6. A public hearing will be held on Wednesday, September 16, 2020, at 6.30 p.m. on the Notice of Intent for James Chiardelli, care of GAF Engineering, Inc., 266 Main Street, Wareham, Massachusetts. Thank you. Who's, who's here for this to speak for this project? Mr. Brian Grady with GAF Engineering. Thank you. Mr. Bichette, your turn. 
Okay, the project site is at Five Valley Road, and the project involves a septic upgrade and the construction of a deck at this site in the buffer zone to a coastal bank, salt marsh, and within a coastal flood zone. Um, an existing septic system is to be replaced with a new Title V nitrogen reducing system. Um, the leach field for the new system would have a low stone wall around it because it has to be slightly raised. Um, but it is located in the furthest corner of the lot away from the resource area. Um, also proposed is an 18 by 37 foot deck in the buffer zone to a coastal bank. Um, this appears to be within the 30 foot no activity zone, though this isn't necessarily represented that way on the plan. Um, we did get a DEP file number, but I do think that um, you have a coastal bank closer towards the house than what is shown on the plan. So I would recommend the continuance to get that looked at more closely at this time. Okay. Brian, comments? Uh, well, I, I guess I disagree with Dave regarding his interpretation, calling that a retaining wall, a coastal bank. Um, we do call seawalls coastal banks. Um, this is a retaining wall. And I don't know if anyone's been out there, but if you look in the general area, um, it's generally flat topography, except for some of these homes that have raised walls or features like this. Um, I'm quite hesitant to classify this as a coastal bank simply because it's a, a vertical face within the flood zone. Uh, I don't know how many coastal banks we would have therefore throughout town if we start classifying retaining walls, vertical landscape walls as coastal banks as long as they fall within the flood zone or land subject to coastal storm flowage. Well, that's basically how the definition is written. So yes, we do have a lot of these in town and on other project sites, that's always how we've characterized these things. Um, so yes, you're correct. They're, these things are all over town, but that's just the way the definition is set up. It doesn't right. distinguish between whether there's a seawall or whether there's a retaining wall. It just states that if a certain feature um, meets a certain criteria in terms of its slope, and it's within the flood zone, then it qualifies as a coastal bank. So that's how I'm coming up with the way I'm looking at it. Um, and I guess Brian and I just disagree on, on how this is looked at in this particular case. Yeah, I agree with your interpretation. I understand where you're coming from. I think that might be on the extreme end. I just think a little bit of evaluation on a site-by-site -site basis. You know, I'm just trying to think of some sites or some instances uh, in the flood zone. You'll have a, a dwelling with a, a walkout basement or a drive under garage. You'll have vertical retaining walls around that. Um, you'll have an 18-inch landscape wall. Um, so when does a wall become a wall? If it's one eight-inch block high, uh, does it have to be 18 inches high? Does it have to be of a certain length if it's only 10 feet long? Uh, so that that's my point is when does it become a coastal bank? At what height, at what length, at what situation? You know, the base of this wall is up at elevation 10. Um, I don't know if it's seen any uh, seawater or stormwater in the last 70 years. So that that's just my reticence about uh, classifying this as a coastal bank. In Hurricane Bob, it did. <laughs> yeah. All right. So once in 70 years or something like that, it happens. We know it's in the flood zone. It's going to happen. Um, but, you know, the other factors, coastal banks, um, are they sediment sources? Of course, none of these features that are walls are going to be sediment sources. Um, any change in vertical height is going to be a buffer to storm damage, whether it's a wall or whether it's just a, a raise in elevation. So 
that's my reticence in, in classifying this as a coastal bank is the impact to this project is as well as other considerations. So I would just um, suggest that each site needs to be evaluated on its own merits. If it has, you know, a situation such as this, a vertical retaining wall, that's not a seawall or a landscape wall or another feature, just retaining earth, as I said, maybe for a, a walkout basement or a drive under garage, which I, uh, I can picture some sites in my head right now and just driving through my head through Onset, uh, most there's gonna be coastal banks pretty much on every lot then. Yeah, David, and, you... and, it, and in a lot of those places, that is true. Um, so if the commission wants to, you know, for those, some of you may have been there, some of you may not have been there. Um, if I have no problem with the septic upgrade, obviously that needs to be done. It's just a question of how the commission wants to regard that feature. And if you wish to get a, a, a look at it and come to some conclusion, then that's fine. That's just okay. my recommendation and the board can go whichever direction it wants to go. David, where do you see the 30, where do you see the coastal bank? Can you point it out on, on the particular um, map? Yeah, this right here. On the plan? That's this, the coastal bank. According to definition, this would be considered it, yes. That's right up to where there is a stone wall. Yes. Right? It's, don't, it's, it really is a, what you're thinking, it's abutting the stone wall that already exists. Right. Now this deck is upland from that stone wall. It's already Correct. it's already disturbed lawn. It's lo it's lawn area behind the wall. That's correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm going to ask the board if they've got any questions, Alyssa. Um. So David, would you say that on other situations like this, we consider that a wall or do we consider it the coastal bank? Well, like I said, on other sites, we have considered walls like this coastal banks if they're below or in the flood zone. Um, you know, it is it is a tricky call, I would say. I would agree that that is true, but I'm just simply focusing on what the state definition is and how, how they um, regard such things based on their definition and their policy. So uh, what would be done to mitigate that? Just making your deck smaller and... Well, if you considered that, the edge, then you'd have to have your 30 foot no activity zone. And that might mean that this couldn't be done because it's within that 30 foot. So the house would be in the 30 foot. That, that currently exists, yes. Or just at the edge of it, yeah. Liz, anything else? No. Okay, David. Yeah, um, Dave, where, if you were to draw, if that was the coastal, if that is the edge of the, that is the coastal bank, where would the 30 foot uh, line be on that map, on that drawing? Well, it's hard to say because um, this isn't a scale on the computer, but this line here is 24 feet. Right. So if you flip that, you're gonna be somewhere in here for 30 feet, you know? Right. So the septic would be just outside of that, correct? Yeah, the septic is outside that, but wouldn't necessarily count because there's no other place for the septic to go anyway, even, even if it were within that area. So explain what, what defines that as, as the coastal bank? What's, what's the critical criteria that we're looking at here? What's, what's, what do we need to know? An elevation that is steeper than 10 to one in slope that's still underneath the elevation of the flood zone line. So in this case, the flood zone line's elevation 14. So if you have a slope that's steeper than 10 to one, which a wall is straight up and down. So obviously that's steeper than one to one. 
I mean, 10 to one, so that therefore under the definition, that's how it would be regarded. So if that wall wasn't there, what would it be? What, what would happen? Uh, it's hard to say because you don't know how the land would slope. Would would it be a quick short slope? Would be would it be a long gradual slope going back to the house? Since since it's there, we don't know what it would be like if it weren't there. So I can't really answer that. So it's a ten to one slope. That that's the critical factor. Is that what you're saying? Right. Okay. All right. Thanks. Just uh, if I could add a little something to that. Uh, your point as to what the slope would be. Uh, if you look at my test pit data, uh, which the test pit is right in that front yard where the septic is located, there was four feet of fill. And that would have put the natural grade at around elevation nine. So this site was filled to raise that house and, and construct it up. Um, so the, the original condition of that site would have been uh, Fairly flat. And then that would put the 30 foot no activity zone out where you guys have it here then, correct? Is that, is that what you're saying? Well, we've taken it off the seawall, which is adjacent to Pleasant Harbor and adjacent right. to the marsh. That's where we've right. called it. Um, but if we're gonna call that section of wall a coastal bank, then I'm, I'm assuming we would call the wall as it returns along Valley Road in front of the house a coastal bank. So now we're directly altering a coastal bank through the construction of the septic system. Um, mm, yes, I see that. It is tricky, I understand that. That's, uh, I don't need more questions, I just gotta think about this one. And I think we should continue it because it's a complicated issue. You know what I mean? Try to figure this out ourselves, I don't know. Yeah, we, I have no objection to that if anyone wants to go and view the site. So I don't have any more questions. Uh. Mary, anything? The question of that definition of coastal bank seems to be confusing. Yep. I Jim. Have I have nothing. Carol. No questions. Ron. Oh, sorry, I might have having a problem with the button. Yeah, I mean, it, it seems like it's a very, you know, complex issue that, you know, probably garners some additional thoughts. So I would, I would definitely agree with having a continuance just to, you know, put some more mind to it to make sure that all the proper decisions are made correctly. Okay, thank you. Uh, exterior bathroom, you've got a toilet on the outside? <laughs> Where in the world is that drain to? Where's the cesspool? This, there's a cesspool in the backyard that takes care of. There's actually a shower, a toilet, and a sink in that back enclosure. But you have also said that if it can't go, if it's not connected to the new sewage disposal system, the sink and, to and toilet will be removed? Correct. No, just the toilet. No, sink, the sink and toilet. And toilet will be removed. The shower will be changed to drain to surface ground. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah he has to speak with his plumber who may be able to uh, drill through the wall and connect uh, the plumbing to the new system. If he's unable to do that, then he'll have to abandon those features. Okay. Where's the cesspool now? There's one in the front and there's one in the back. Well, I, I see the one in the back. Um, I, I put find where it was in the front. That would be abandoned and filled and crushed, right? Yes. Yeah. It'll right, all be it's kind of right here where the tank is. Oh going. yeah, I can see the circle underneath the yeah. dark spot. <sighs> okay. So I guess the recommendate is there anybody on the line that would like to speak for or against this project? So if we if this is continued what answer will we have in two more weeks? Well, you'll have a sense of determining how you feel you want to interpret that feature. Um, and that'll just be a decision of, of you as commission members. Now, I've gone to the site. Has there anybody else visited this site? No. It is a fairly large 
flat front yard between this stone wall and the marsh. Wow. Would the commission members be willing to take a drive down there and take a, take a look at the site? Valley Road is hard to find. I couldn't find it. Not that hard. <laughs> you just have to know to go down Robin Wood and take a left where it splits. A right where it splits as opposed to a left. So you hit Silas Point, you've gone too far. So you could take a right where it splits. It's off on the left down a dirt road. So would everybody, people be willing to take a look at it? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes, I can do that. Okay. I, um, I'll need a motion to continue until when's the next meeting? October 7th. So moved. I have a motion to continue until October 2nd. 7th. 7th. What did I say? Seven. October 7th. Yeah. I have a motion. Second. I have a second by Jim. All in favor, Alyssa? Yes. David? Yes. Mary? Yes. Jim? Yep. Sandy? Yes. We'll continue it until the 7th for site visits. Okay. Thanks Thank very you. much. Notice of public hearing, I believe we're on Eversource. Is that correct, Dave? Yes. Okay. Notice of public hearing pursuant to the provisions of the Massachusetts Wetland Protection Act, Chapter 131, Section 40, and the Wareham Wetland Protective Bylaw. Division 6, a public hearing will be held on Wednesday, September 16, 2020, at 6.30 p.m. on the Notice of Intent for Eversource Energy, care of AECOM, 9 Jonathan Bourne Drive, Cassett Mass to rebuild and upgrade an existing overhead electric distribution line located within the electric right of way between Farm to Market Road and the Eversource Wareham substation, number 714, on Charge Pond Road, Wareham, Massachusetts. Thank you. Who's, who's on the line for this project? Uh, my name is Christopher Newhall. I'm with AECOM, and I'm here tonight representing Eversource Energy. And I think we've got some other folks on from uh, Eversource that I'll let them introduce themselves as well. Hi, my name is Jennifer Vitaro, and I'm an environmental specialist with Eversource Energy. Thank you. All uh, right. Fred Slade, construction manager for the Plymouth Division for Eversource. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah, and this is Danny Hagan. Um, I represent the projects uh, which are in the, uh, and coordinating with uh, the other work that's being done at the substation. And uh, good evening, John Vittoro, manager of distribution engineering. Okay. I think I've got all five of you. All right, David, your turn. Okay, so this um, project site is within an electrical easement between Charge Pond Road and Tyhona Road. And the project involves the replacement and expansion of a transmission line. And this is within riverfront area, bordering land subject to flooding and in the buffer zone to bordering vegetated wetland. Um, this project is being filed as a limited project under the Mass Wetlands Protection Act as well. Um, so it's proposed to replace and expand approximately 9,400 linear feet of transmission line to accommodate new solar projects that want to tie into the grid. Um, this would involve the removal of the existing transmission line poles and the installation of new larger poles and new transmission lines. Um, some of these new poles are proposed to be installed within the 50 foot no activity zone. Um, with the limit of work being within just a few feet of the edge of bordering vegetated and wet wetlands in some locations. Um, so the applicant is requesting a waiver from the 50 foot no activity zone setback that exists under the bylaw. Um, when we did the site visit, we had discussed some changes to the plans that could potentially pull the limit of work further from the edge of the resource area in some of the locations. Um, I had spoken to Chris Newhall also about providing some additional details showing existing 
and propose grades um, at a couple spots on the project site that are the most critical or closest to the edge of the wetlands. Um, all of the proposed work would be within the existing electrical easement right of way. Um, in some locations, construction mats would be put in place to minimize the impact to vegetation while the construction vehicles are, would be working in these areas. Um, hay bales or straw bales and silt fence would be installed between the work and the resource area. Um, we did get a DEP file number for this project, but at this time I would recommend a continuance of the hearing to get some updated plans and to have time to review those updates and also for the commission to consider how they're gonna address the 50 foot no activity zone uh, waiver request. That's all I Thank have you. at the moment. Okay, uh, Chris, would you like to speak to this or does anybody else? Before they, jump, before they jump in, I just wanna point out to the commission that there's a number of sections of plans for this. So depending on where they want to talk about, I might have to flip from one set of plans to another, so. Yeah, there's 10 different views, right? I got 10 sites. There's, there's a few different views, yes. Yep. Okay. Sure. Uh, so this is Chris Newhall, and um, I did just want to uh, obviously uh, say that yes, we we did go out yesterday and we conducted a site review with uh, with David. Um, we were able to address some of the concerns specifically with Structure Eleven, Dave, which was the the one that um, I think you had the the most concern about, um, and we were able to move that structure further away from the wetland boundary and subsequently pull that limit of work that was um, close to that wetland boundary away as well. Uh, I did submit some revised drawings uh, to you via email this afternoon. Uh, I'm not sure if you've had a chance to look at those yet or not. Um, and uh, I, I guess. Yeah, I have not seen okay. those yet. Okay. Um, I guess I'll, if you want to um, jump to the, the next previous drawing in the, in the map set, um, this is the location that we looked at in the field that you were most concerned about. And the original plan was to try to do a bit of a balanced uh, cut and fill approach to try to uh, even out the grade in that area right where structure 11 is proposed. Uh, you can see those three uh, single point, um, those represent pole locations that will need to get installed. And uh, to do that, the equipment that's required to essentially sit there and drill on that location does need to be fairly level. Um, it doesn't have to be 100% level, but it, it can't be you know, a difference of one or even, you know, two feet over, say, a distance of 12 feet or so, uh, because the machine does need to sit fairly level. Um, so what we did was we kind of went back to our engineering group and our construction group this morning, <clears throat> excuse me, and we were able to take a look at that location and revise the location for structure 11 to move it approximately 20 feet back to the west. So that would be, as folks are looking at this drawing, that would be to the left. And it's gonna be in close proximity to the existing structure that you can kind of see, it's represented by a gray dot on the plan, but you can also see it on the aerial background photo as well. Um, you can kind of see the, the shadow coming off of the two pole structure, um, kind of pointing you know, towards the top of the page a little bit. Um, but what we're able to do then is now we will have to temporarily erect a, uh, a pole to hold the conductor wires that are there. Those need to stay in place during construction. So we'll now need to erect a temporary pole that's, again, just wooden poles. It's very, um, fairly simple, um, but erect that further to the west, to the left of the existing pole that will hold up the existing conductors that'll allow us to remove the current existing pole 11 that's there now and just free up some space uh, for, the, um, for the excavator uh, 
uh, foundation drill rig to get in there and drill those foundations down. So, um, you know, we were able to move those structures about 20 feet to the left, further away from the wetland boundary and that slope that leads down to Tihona Pond. And we were able to move that limit of work, uh, a corresponding amount of about 10 to 12 feet. It, it does vary a little bit, um, but we have now taken that limit of work where it's previously currently shown. I think the closest limit is about five feet. Now the closest limit is going to be 14 feet uh, from the wetland boundary to the, the nearest limit of work. Um, so we were able to take a look at that and address some of your questions uh, today. And we've submitted some revised drawings that show all of that uh, to you via email this afternoon. Uh, in addition to moving the structure, we've specified now that this is the, um, to smooth out this grade to allow for um, setup of the, the foundation drill rig. We're only going to be taking some um, some earth off of the top of this. There's um, it's a little difficult to see with um, the topo contours on the drawing, but this is a bit of a mound that's here right in the middle, uh, basically right where the existing structure is located. That's basically right at the highest uh, elevation point at this location. So we'll be taking the top of that down by about uh, certainly two feet, three, potentially even four feet. But what we'll be doing is just taking that material off to uh, allow for a, a level uh, work surface and we'll take that excess material and we'll bring it outside of the buffer zone, spread it onto the right of way um, and, uh, and seed and, and mulch that so that it'll revegetate. Um, and that's uh, some of the, the revisions that we've made to the drawing based on, on your comments um, in the field. We also, when we were out there yesterday, had talked about the need to move, uh, potentially move structure 12, which is on the east side of Tihona Pond. Uh, and fortunately, our engineers were able to um, look at the span that would uh, occur for this new conductor line over Tihona Pond, and they do not need to move proposed structure 12 at all, and they can still maintain that span um, uh, or increase the span just slightly by 20 feet and still maintain the clearance of the wires above Tihona Pond. Um, and that's the only other, uh, that's the only plan or change rather that we made to the, to the site plans that we submitted. Um, as you can see from the drawings, there's uh, an existing power line. Uh, there's two transmission lines in this distribution line that we're proposing to rebuild. There are is clearing right down to uh, obviously the, the wetland edge and, and the pond edge um, in more or less all locations along the stretch. There are structures also that exist within that 50 foot no disturb uh, buffer around the wetlands. So, um, you know, in terms of this project, um, you know, while we do have some work within that 50 foot no disturb, um, we've taking great pains to site all of these structures outside of wetlands and as far from the wetland boundary as really is as practical for the spans that, uh, that do need to be maintained. The span over Tihonet Pond, I think is uh, over 760 linear feet. And then uh, there's a, another span a little bit further to the east over a natural wetland complex uh, that I believe is over 900 feet. Um, so by engineering this line to have these taller poles um, on either side of these, you know, environmental wetland resources, we've been able to actually prevent the need to install any poles within wetlands. Um, and obviously we wouldn't be installing a pole in the middle of a pond, but we are able to, to span the pond completely and keep the poles out of the 100 foot I mean, a hundred year floodplain that's associated with Tihona Pond as well. So in that sense, we, we've really minimized all of our environmental impacts to the maximum extent that we, that we can. And I, I've probably spoken enough and I'll turn it back over to you or, or any of the other Eversource folks if they'd like to um, 
provide additional comment. Anybody else would like to speak for the project from Eversource? Yeah, this is Danny Hagan, the project manager. I just want to emphasize the uh, the necessity for this uh, distribution line upgrade for a very large portfolio of uh, PV um, solar projects in Wareham and Carver. Uh, without this upgrade, um, those projects will not be able to interconnect um, reliably to uh, the Eversource system. So. Okay. Yeah, um, if I could, I have, this is a John Ventura, manager of engineering. So we, we did have uh, multiple meetings today uh, based on the comments received yesterday. Uh, we did try to accommodate all the concerns and um, you know, I think provided detailed sketches showing the requested changes. And we're hoping that um, there aren't uh, significant delays in this review. Uh, it is, like Danny said, it is a critical project for us uh, and for the area. And um, it's part of a much larger project, and we did uh, go through uh, painstaking design changes to minimize environmental impact here. So uh, we just wanted the group to be aware of that, and uh, we are sensitive to uh, issues of the area. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, questions from the board. Alyssa? I have no questions. David? I don't hear David. Okay, Mary, any questions? No questions. Yeah. Jim? No. Carol? No. Ron? No questions. All right, it's my turn. So we have these 10 views that you've given us, and only numbers four and five go to both edges of. Tyhonet Pond, is that correct? Um, the two views that we're looking at, this one here and um, this particular yeah, number here. four, number four and five on both sides of, of the pond are really what we're talking about, the 50 foot no work zone, correct? And what um, they have the envisioned. Yeah. No, there are there are some other points along the way, um, which are on other pages, which um, they are doing work within that same zone. Um, we just haven't looked at those particular areas. I think these two that we're currently looking at are probably the most significant, um, but there are a couple others that work is proposed within that area as well. Okay, then I'm going to ask you, what, uh, uh, Chris, what other views do we have of the 10 that are within the 50 foot no work zone? Uh, so Dave, I think if, you, if you'd like to start at the very beginning, I think we do have a, an interconnect um, for one of the, the solar PV arrays that does need to get um, a couple poles installed by Eversource. So this, is, uh, this view is to the west of Farm to Market Road. Um, obviously we've got a, a cranberry bog that you can see on the left hand side of the page. Um, one of the solar uh, photovoltaic arrays has a proposed plan to run their interconnection line down along that existing uh, kind of dirt access road that you can see running north to south along the, the cranberry bog. And then they will be installing um, at least two poles south of where you can see the utility recloser and the utility meter poles that Eversource is proposing to install. Um, so this is uh, one location where there will be work again within the 50 foot no disturb. Um, the poles are gonna be installed sort of along that road edge, but there is an existing uh, row of, of trees there that will need to come down to accommodate those poles. Uh, the clearance between the conductors and the trees has to be a minimum 10 feet. Uh, so that's what you see there with uh, it's sort of the, the black and white dashed line. That's not only our limit of work, but that's also our limit of clearing that we would have in there. Uh, these poles are very uh, kind of small, short, I think uh, 45 foot poles that get installed that can be installed with just a typical um, 
you know, you've probably seen these trucks driving on, on area roadways by Eversource. They're typically the tool wheel uh, or dual wheel rear axle. They've got a boom that kind of lays down over the top and it's usually got a bit of a, an auger on the side of that boom. Um, but those are the types of trucks that would install those, those poles at that location. Um, so this is the first location. And if we- Okay, so if the, the orange magenta is the 50 foot no work zone. Uh, so yes, we're it's talking kind of about a red and blue. We're, yes. we're talking about clearing trees. Okay. And a couple poles in that location. Okay, next slide. So on this view, there is work again within the existing um, overhead electrical easement. It's cleared. Uh, these areas are all grassed. Uh, these are to replace poles that are, are there. These are more or less like a one-to-one -one replacement, not quite exactly in the same spot. It, the, the new pole is offset slightly. Um, but for these locations, there will be no clearing. It's just quite quite literally workspace within 50 feet of a cranberry bog. Okay. So on this view, there's very little, if any work, there's no work within the 50. It's just using an existing access road that um, uh, traverses the 50 foot no disturb buffer. You can see that in the kind of the purple dash line at the sort of, you know, middle bottom of the sheet. So no proposed structures or clearing within the 50 foot no disturb in this location, just quite literally traversing it, driving through it with vehicles. Okay, and we've already talked about this this slide. Correct. Right? Let, me, let me pull up the other set of drawings. Hold on one, one moment. Now these electrical lines already exist, right? You're just going to have to put newer ones in to be stronger and capable of carrying more electrical, right? Correct. The existing it's circuit that's there does not have the capacity to transmit all of the power that would be generated by these uh, solar voltaic farms to the um, to the existing Wareham 714 substation. So that's why this upgrade is required. Are you going to have to do more upgrade around this line further in Wareham or just these 10 points, these 10 slides? I have to defer to Eversource on yeah, that. If I can that. clarify. So there is, you know, some some uh, street work, uh, at some of the more routine construction at some of the interconnections. But uh, the big uh, one other thing besides putting in this new line we're actually changing it to what's called a double circuit line. Uh, so we're, we're going to remove the existing single circuit line that's there and put a double circuit line uh, to give us the extra capacity. So that is part of this project. Um, the, the, the eight solar arrays and battery systems that are being put into this area are major uh, source of energy going back into the system. And that's why we needed to do these. We need to do these upgrades. Okay, um, thank you. Is this the new plan, David? Yes. So if this is the new plan, Dave, um, if you'd like to go back to, um, I think it is it sheet four where we show structure 11, and that might show the, um, the revised plan that, that we were able to, the changes that we were able to make today. Yeah, I don't have the, any revised plan. I'm just pulling okay. up um, some plans that I had already saved. Um, and have on my computer. So I don't have that. I just okay. have what was originally submitted. Okay. okay. That's, that's We've fine. seen number five already. So this is six, right? This is six. Correct. And this okay. also does have uh, work within the 50 foot, no disturb. Um, there's an existing structure that's already located within the 50 foot, no disturb that will be coming out. And again, um, new taller poles will be installed at this location. And that the reason for that is so that we can span this large wetland complex that you see in green um, that kind of takes up the entire right-hand side of the, the sheet. Um, there is an existing pole for this distribution line that is out in the middle of that wetland. During the design phase of this project, we 
emphasize that, you know, we really want to be able to span this entire wetland so that we don't have to put timber matting into this wetland. This is really the only natural, for the most part, wetland along the entire route. Uh, you know, essentially all the others are either just some fringing wetland around uh, Tihona Pond or Cranberry Bogs. So uh, obviously, you know, maintaining the integrity um, of this wetland was important. So the engineers were able to design this, um, this span at this location to have that conductor wire span the entire wetland without the need to have a pole in the middle of the wetland to support those, uh, those wires. So Chris, what will happen to the pole that's already in the middle? Uh, so if Dave wants to go to the next page, we can look at that quickly. So this, this pole is mid span. Um, and with the new taller structures on either side of this wetland, we will now essentially make this structure obsolete and we won't need to use it anymore. So what we're proposing to do, as you can see uh, with our call out on the drawing, um, is we will basically uh, send a, a, a person in on foot with the, essentially a, ch a chainsaw and fell that existing structure just like you would, you know, fell a tree that's standing. Um, and once that comes down, we'll be able to basically send somebody back in with a, uh, a wire that's attached to a winch on a truck that's staged outside the wetland. And they will, you know, attach that chain, uh, that wire rather around the, the pole structure and pull that out, just winch it right out of that wetland. So they'll, so they'll drag it across the wetland. What happens if you just leave it there? Um, well, so, I mean, we could theoretically leave it there. We could chop it up into, you know, cut it up with a, a chainsaw into some smaller pieces just so that it'll probably break down a little bit faster. Um, these are telephone poles, though, so they are, you know. They've got nasty stuff on them. They're, they're made not to rot. <laughs> so it's a good the, way to put it. Okay. The ideal thing to do here would be to winch that out of the wetland. Okay. And yes, some shrubs will probably get kind of knocked down. Some branches will get broken. But and they'll overall, grow back. This is, and they'll grow back. This, okay. grow back. And this is the minimal impact way to try to remove that from okay. the wetland. Okay. Ready for the next one. So this is now on the east side of this large wetland complex. Again, a similar situation where we do have work proposed within the uh, 50 foot no disturb. Um, again, the purpose of this is so that we can completely span this large wetland. And again, I'd, I'd have to look at the engineering drawings, but I believe it's nine, it's over 900 feet and it might be 942 feet to be exact. Um, don't quote me, but to do that, we need to unfortunately have these structures sort of as close to this wetland as possible so that we can allow for um, wire sag during the summertime when the wires get hot, they sag more um, so that you do have to ensure that you can have a, a minimum clearance above any type of vegetation or anything like that so that there is no what they call blowout, basically a, an arc that would occur when trees or any type of structure gets too close to a, an energized wire. Um, so that, that is the reason why we have these, these structures located as close to the wetlands as we do, is so that we don't have to have any structures within the wetland. Um, so and, we give up some work on a 50 foot no work zone on one end to prevent uh, disturbance of the wetlands. Right, to, to prevent the span. Okay. To prevent thousands of square feet of timber matting in that wetland that you see there, wetland <laughs> W2, um, to install a single structure okay. in span. Next, please. And this is the, uh, the final location where we've got any work within the buffer zone or the 50 foot um, no disturb. Uh, you can see structure 38, which is essentially in the middle of the, the view there. Um, a similar situation, we are spanning a large uh, cranberry bog complex, so we have to install tall poles on either side so that we can get that adequate clearance uh, between the conductor wires and, uh, and the cranberry bogs below. Um, this area, um, again, you can kind of see with the topography, 
it's also up on a bit of a, a mound. Um, so to smooth that out and allow for the equipment that's required to drill those foundations to set up, you do have to have a fairly level working surface. So you can see that we are proposing to kind of push around some of the dirt that's kind of at the top of the, the mound, if you will, and kind of push that down uh, to the north to, again, provide a bit more of a level working surface uh, for the, that rig to set up. Um, and as Dave mentioned, we will be installing erosion sediment controls at the edge of the workspace. Uh, those will consist of straw bale and, uh, and silt fence that will all be staked in. Um, so that'll be sort of the, the most robust ENS controls that we'd be able to install out here to kind of hold back some of that dirt. And then again, once obviously we're all done out there for construction, the entire site will get um, seeded and, and straw mulch will be blown down on top of it to allow for revegetation. Okay, got one more to go. Yep, and then this is the, uh, the final sheet here. Um, structure 39 is outside of the, the wetland buffer, but we do bump up right next to it. So, um, you know, we were showing this as, a, I guess, a kind of a full disclosure sort of a, a scenario to show that, um, you know, we don't need to encroach into the 100 foot buffer in this location for this structure. Okay. So, if I, there are some trees to be removed. And there's some soil to be moved around in order to give yourself a stable place to do your work from. Is that correct? What I'm hearing correct. within the 50 foot. Okay. Now it's my understanding there's a new plan because of what you did on sheet four. Correct. So is there anybody that would like to speak for or against this project that's online? If not, I would say we continue until 10 7, October 7th, to see the new plan. Yes. Dave, anything else? No, I don't have anything further. Uh, are we uh, able to share our screen to show the new plan? That's. Um, yeah, I could shut my share off. I'm not sure if you, you know, if you want to try to share your screen, that's fine. Even if you can show it, though, I still would recommend the continuance to the commission because I do want to spend time and really look at it closely and make sure I fully understand the differences between this and the other and see it in the field as well. Chris can uh, share his screen for sure. He's got it ready to go. <laughs> okay, I'm going to shut this off. Okay, let me see if I can uh, figure out how to share my screen now. So as Chris does that, I just wanted to reiterate that, you know, we did try to accommodate all the concerns that were raised at the walk. And um, we would like if, if this does satisfy those concerns, if we can get some sort of a uh, contingent approval so we can proceed with our uh, project, because it is significant and it has a lot of um, uh, things that need to uh, fall into place uh, depending on the permitting. So uh, we appreciate the uh, Different schedule, normal um, um, schedule, if possible. Thank you. Well, and, and Dave, I think um, you may have disabled participant sharing. Uh, as I try to share my screen, I'm getting a, a message that says the host has disabled participant screen sharing. Well, let's see here how to change that. How about now? Okay, I think that's working. All right, let me uh, come to this screen. Can uh, is everybody seeing my screen? Not yet. Once, oh, once you once okay, you, I just hit share. Okay, there you go. one extra step. Um, can everybody see my screen and the the drawing um, that we develop and you know. Structure 11 should be kind of here on the left hand side. Okay, so you, right -hand move, side you used the oranges and you moved them to the red. That's correct. So the orange represents where the, you know, the current or the previous plan structures were. That's uh, the one that, that Dave was just showing. We have now moved those over to be here at the red. And you can see that this is where we'll have to install that temporary pole 
to temporarily suspend those conductor wires while we take down this existing pole at this location in gray. And then that allows us to bring in that, uh, that drill rig, like I said, to drill these foundations and, and erect those structures. And then once those are in place, we just switch the conductors back off the temporary pole to the new pole. So this is the area here that we are able to move back from the wetland. And again, the previous plan, the closest distance was five feet to that wetland boundary. And on this plan, the closest distance, which is right here, is 14 feet. Um, this closest or this next closest distance over here, that's 20 feet. Um, so, and then we kind of show the, the grading that would be required where we don't have any fill down along this downslope side anymore. And we're just now taking uh, basically these contour lines and bringing them back up and kind of tying them into the existing road elevations so that we can have uh, basically take about two to four feet off of this top area here. So, um, you know, this this wouldn't be quite as, as steep as what you're seeing here on the topography. So this would now essentially this moving this contour up to here so that most of this would be a flat working surface for the drill rig. Okay. Uh, Mr. Bichette has asked this to be continued so we can do some more um, research and walking of the site. Is that correct, Dave? Um, yes, that's what I recommended. Uh, if I could just ask Chris one question. So in terms of the regrading, so now you're saying no material will be pushed towards the wetland, if you will, compared to what was proposed on the initial plan. Correct. So on the initial plan, we were proposing, you know, again, a balanced cut and fill where we would be taking the top of that mound down and pushing that soil out so that we could essentially, you know, if you're looking at a, a surface that's like this, you kind of take that down and push that out to the sides. Uh, we're no longer doing that. So what essentially we will be doing is taking off this mound here and just removing that soil and we'll probably spread it, you know, right through this area of the right of way over here. So it's outside any uh, buffer zones and uh, again, put down some seed and some straw mulch so that that can revegetate. Um, but now we don't have, we're not pushing any soil this way. So essentially we're just gonna be taking more or less the top off of this little mound here. So Dave, you're good. To, are you good to continue until the 7th of October or do you need more time? Um, no, I wouldn't say it needs to be longer than October 7th, no. Okay. Um, one, one other quick question in terms of this, uh, well, I can't point to it, but anyway, the, well, the <laughs> I, I guess the, the southern side of, of the work area, sure, here. Um, will that require tree clearing at all? No, this is, um, it's, it's a little tricky to see from the aerial photograph just because um, it is so dark, but you can tell that this is a shadow that's right through here that's uh, kind of in, you know, dark gray or, or black. And the green uh, tree here is the actual tree. So this is just actual shadowed um, coming off of that tree just from the aerial fit photograph. But no tree clearing will be required. Okay. I don't have any further questions. Mrs. Okay. Chair. I guess I need a motion to continue until 10 7. I move. Second. I have motion and Jim, uh, Jim seconded. All in favor, Alyssa? Yes. David? Yes. Mary? Yes. Jim? Yes. Sandy, we'll continue until October 7th. Thank you, everybody, for attending. And uh, I think we're getting close. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Notice of public hearing pursuant to the provisions of the Massachusetts Wetland Protection Act General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40, and the Wareham Wetland Protective Bylaw, Division 6. A public hearing will be held on Wednesday, September 16th, 2020, at 6 30 p.m. on the notice of intent for Amy and Carl Worst, 38 Carlisle Street, Worcester, Massachusetts, 01602, to replace an existing Retaining wall located on Assessor's Map 
124 lots 89 and 90, 11 Priscilla Avenue, Wareham, Massachusetts. Thank you. Is there anybody on the line to speak for this project? Yes. Yes. And identify yourselves, please. Carl Wurst. Amy West. Don't forget Dave. Okay. So David, your turn. Okay. Um, so this project site is at 11 Priscilla Ave, and this project involves the reconstruction of um, some sections of retaining wall at this yeah. location, which is along White Island Pond. Um, this is a project that we had reviewed previously and issued an order of conditions for. Um, that order has since expired, and the applicant is simply trying to get the project reapproved. Um, to replace those retaining walls. So essentially this is the same project that we had already previously approved. Um, so again, the wall is kind of right up against the pond. There were some issues um, with getting the pond level to a point where they could actually build the wall feasibly. Um, so that was what was causing the delay for the most part. Um, and so again, as I said, they're simply trying to get the order of conditions uh, reapproved. We did get a DEP file number for the project. I um, don't have any issues with the project. Um, and so I would recommend the issuance of the order of conditions with the condition that no machinery or materials be located in the pond during construction, that all the work has to be done from the upland side as we had, I think, um, stated in the, on the first go round. Thank you. Um, Amy and Carl, do you have any anything to add to that narrative? No. No. Nope. Okay. Questions from the board. Alyssa. I'm wondering, say, is this a an actual replacement of the wall, David? In other words, they're not going to be going out eight inches or in eight inches. It's a replacement. They're going to be removing something and putting something in its place. Um, well, if you take a look, these gray lines are the existing. <laughs> and this orange is going to be the new location. So it is not exactly in the same location, but it's essentially a very similar uh, project, if you will. Um, so it's no I, I further in, it's no further into the pond no 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 further into the pond there will be some vegetation clearing um there are some shrubs and there is a a tree here that potentially may not be able to stay because the roots may be so close to where the wall exists and where the new wall goes in um that that may not be able to to stay there um and i don't know if um Mr. Worth can explain or comment on that in terms of what the contract contractor has talked about in terms of that tree. Just that he, you know, he's not sure whether it's going to be something that the tree is going to continue to stand once the, the digging around there to put the, the footing for the retaining wall is done. But we're willing to add another tree or two further, you know, a few feet further in. Right. If, if that tree can't, can't. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We like to do it. <laughs> okay. Anything else, Alyssa? Nothing, Sandra. Okay. David? No questions. Mary? No questions. Jim? No questions. Carol? No questions. Ron? Uh, no questions. I just have a quick one. So one side of your retaining wall looks like it's very old timber. The other one looks like it's fallen down cement blocks, right? So the cement blocks are actually, yeah, I'm not sure where, well, I guess they are on our property. Those are going to stay there. The part that's right, the main part where Dave has his arrows was a timber retaining wall there that has washed out. Okay. So we because came back, we came back one spring and it was gone. 
Because because I was standing on your pier and I looked to the left and I saw um, maybe four or five cinder blocks in the sand right next to your pier. Yeah, those were not part of the wall. No, but they will be removed, correct? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. I have nothing. Is there anybody on the line that like to speak for or against this project? Hearing none, uh, take a motion from the close board. Close. I have a motion to close the hearing. Second. I have a second from Jim. All in favor? Alyssa? Aye. David? Yes. Mary? Yes. Jim? Yes. Sandy, the hearing's closed. To approve the project with the usual restrictions. So we have a motion to issue the standard order of conditions with no machinery from within the pond and all work is done from Upland. Second. I have that motion. I heard a second. All in favor, Alyssa? Yes. David? Yes. Mary? Yes. Jim? Yep. Sandy? Yes. The project is approved and please, please work with Mr. Bichette before you start anything, okay? Okay, thank you. Notice of public hearing pursuant to the provisions of the Massachusetts Wetland Protection Act, General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40 and the Wareham Wetland Protective Bylaw Division 6. A public hearing will be held on Wednesday, September 16, 2020 at 6.30 p.m. on the notice of intent for Glenn Piolo, care of Riverhawk Environmental, LLC, 2183 Ocean Street, Marshfield, Mass, 02050, to construct a pier, ramp, and float system located on Assessor's Map 54, lots P28 and P29, 6 Preservation Lane, Wareham, Massachusetts. Thank you. Is there anybody here to speak for this project? Uh, yes, Madam Chair. My name is Bob Rigo. I'm with Riverhawk Environmental. Thank you, Bob. Mr. Pichette, your turn. Okay. Um, so the project site again is at Six Preservation Lane, and this involves the construction of a pier in Beaver Dam Creek, and this is within land under the ocean. Um, within a salt marsh or riverfront area and within a coastal flood zone. Um, the proposed structure is approximately 170 feet in total length, um, but only approximately 85 feet of it is um, uh, below the mean high tide line. And there's approximately 50 feet or so that is over some upland area and just sort of a boardwalk across the upland. Um, the exact location or proposed location of the pier um, had not been staked out at the site. Uh, so I had spoken to Mr. Rigo about this and he is going to get that um, staked out at the property. We did receive comments from the Harbor Master on this project who had no objections to it. Um, we still have not yet received comments from Mass Natural Heritage because this site is also within the estimated habitat of rare and endangered species. And we also have not received comments yet from the Mass Division of Marine Fisheries. Um, we did get a DEP file number for the project, but at this time I would recommend a continuance so that we get the site staked uh, or the location of the pier staked and that we receive comments from Natural Heritage and from Mass Division of Marine Fisheries. Hey, Bob, anything to add? Uh, no, that, that pretty well sums it up. Um, you know, once we get comments back from uh, NHESP and, uh, and the marine fisheries, uh, we might have more to add. Um, we will get it staked in the field so it's, uh, it can be seen the actual location on the ground. Um, and that's about it. Thank you. Questions on the board? Alyssa? None. David. Mary. No question at this time. Sorry, Jim. I muted none, sorry. Jim. No. See, uh, Carol. No questions. Ron. Uh, no questions at this time. 
Sandy has a question and please don't say not, I'm not surprised. How much, why is there so much land over uh, 50 feet over upland? Why so far into the woods? Uh, it was just, there's an existing order conditions on the uh, subject property for the construction of a house and clearing of the land. Um, so we just kind of went to the existing approved clearing line, but I did uh, speak with David about that. And uh, we, we can certainly reduce the length of the, the uh, elevated pier. It was just kind of to limit overall impact, you know, just have impact from the from a, a piling as opposed to a, uh, a, a, you know, walking over it uh, repeatedly, but, but certainly we can shorten it up. Thank you. I do appreciate you putting the stakes there because I went there this morning and all I did was follow the waddle and I had no idea where this thing was going to go. Right. Yep. No, not a problem at all. Yep. We can put them okay. out there. No problem. Is there anybody online that'd like to speak for or against this project? I'm hearing none. I'll take a motion to continue until the 7th waiting for uh, input from National Heritage and Fisheries. Move to continue till the 7th of October. Second. Second. I heard a second from Jim. And all in favor, Alyssa? Yes. David? Yes. Mary? Yes. Jim? Yes. Sandy, we're continued. Okie dokie, now we're going to our continued ones. I guess, Bob, you're going to stay on because the yes. next one yes. is Perillo for the... Um, site off of Kermeset Road. There was a new set of plans that were distributed from by David this today. Does everybody put that one up online, please, David? And so I'm, I assume, Bob, you're going to speak to this project also? Uh, yes. Okay. So Dave, when he gets this up and gets a chance, he'll read his, he'll read his. Okay. Okay, so um, this project location is lot 29 off of Cremisa Road. And this lot is um, adjacent to Preservation Lane, um, but does sit on Cremisa Road. And this project involves the construction of a single family dwelling in a garage um, and associated utilities within the buffer zone to bordering vegetated wetland at the site. Um, we had continued this hearing previously because um, there was a change made to the wetland boundary and so the plan had to be revised. This plan that we see in front of us does represent the um, revised wetland line. This site also involves quite a bit of fill to be brought into the site to achieve the grades um, shown on the plan. So um, my I did have a question, I guess, regarding the stabilization of those slopes in terms of how that's going to be done. It looks like you're proposing to put some boulders along that edge. Is that still correct? Uh, that's correct. Yep. There's a steep slope on kind of each side of, of the lot on the um, left side as you're looking at it from the roadway in the right and along the right side along the driveway and back of the garage. Yep. It'd be stabilized with large boulders. Okay, and so um, all the work is being kept out of the 30 foot no activity zone. Um, hay bales and silt fence will be installed around the work area and they are providing a dry well uh, chamber that you can see up in this uh, portion of the property to handle runoff from the proposed structures. Um, we do have a DEP file number for this project. so. Uh, I would recommend the issuance of the order of conditions with the standard conditions and also the um, ongoing condition that no work in the future be encroached into the 30 foot no activity zone. Okay, Bob, anything you want to add? Uh, no, thank you. Okay, questions from the board, Alyssa? None. Nah. David? None. Nah. Mary? No. Jim? No. Carol? No. Ron? No. Uh, my only comment, thank you for putting in the second um, 
rain garden. I just don't think, I think you're a little shy on your plant material, but uh, I guess it'll grow. Two little Vinca, two little periwinkles for each one. I'll take a lot for them to cover uh, the, the slope. But uh, is there anybody online to speak for or against this project? Hearing none, I'll take a motion for standard order conditions plus no work, no future work within the 30 foot. We don't have to close this hearing, Sandy. Oh yeah, yes. that would yes, help. We do. I'm we tired. We need to close, close the hearing. hearing. Thank you. I need. I have a motion to close the hearing. Second. I have a second. All in favor, Alyssa. Aye. David. Yes. Mary. Yes. Jim. Yes. Sandy. Yes, the hearing is closed. Move to um, approve the project with standard conditions and the fact that no more work will be done closer to the 30, the 30 foot boundary. Okay. I have a motion. I heard a second. All in favor, Alyssa? David? Yes. Mary? Yes. Jim? Yes. Sandy? Yes. So, Bob? You got the project. Please see Mr. Bichette before you start any work. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Yes. Yeah. So the next one is Loan McCoy. Anybody uh, here for this project? We had received a request from the applicant to continue that hearing um, until the next meeting, which is October 7th. Okay. I take a motion. I take a motion to continue. Motion. Just ask if there's anybody on the line oh. for that one. Is there anybody on the line that likes to speak for or against this project? Hearing none, I heard Alyssa make the motion. Second. I had second from Jim. All in favor, Alyssa? Yes. David? Yes. Mary? Yes. Jim? Yes. Sandy? Yes, the hearing is continued until October 7th. All right, we have the three Borrego solar system projects. Um, we've also received a request uh, to continue all three of those until the next meeting as well, because they're still um, getting us revised plans on those projects. I move that we move that motion to the October 7th meeting. Okay. Uh, before I take a vote, is there anybody, I know that I um, may have some people interested in this project on the line. Do you have any questions before we continue the uh, motion to clear, to continue? Okay, so I had a motion. I had a second. All in favor or continuing until the 7th? Alyssa? Yes. David? Yes. Mary? Yes. Jim? Yes. Sandy, yes, we're continued. The next hearing we have is Manuel D. Mor Miranda. Is there anybody here for that particular project? Hey, uh, yeah, Brian Wallace, JC Engineering. Hey, Brian. Mr. Bichette, your turn. Okay, just getting the plan up here. I recall we needed to make some changes to the wetland line, right? Yes, that's correct. Um, just pulling this up here. Um, okay, so this project site is on lot 1000B3 on Cranberry Highway. Um, 
and this request was for the commission to review and uh, hopefully approve a wetland delineation on this property. So um, upon the initial review, I did um, feel that the line needed to be changed. And so we did meet back out at the site and did make a change to the wetland boundary. So if you can see my arrow, the original wetland line kind of cut across like this. Um, a change was made to include this additional area within this triangle um, as part of the wetland. So this um, delineation does represent the change that was made. And also on this end, there was an additional flag placed because the original line sort of ended here. And there was one more flag placed just to show the direction that the wetland was going. Um, for whatever reason, the applicant did not feel that it was necessary to flag the wetland all the way out to the edge of the property. So I'm just letting the commission know that, you know, this line does continue, um, but for their purposes, they didn't feel they needed to represent that. So when the commission approves this, they're only gonna be approving the, the wetland boundary that's shown with the understanding that there is additional wetland over here that's not completely marked out. Um, but based on this plan that we now have, I would recommend the approval of this wetland boundary for flags num numbers four through 12. Okay. Um, what is it? What number is it? Um, so this is an ANRAD, so it's not really a number per se. It's just going to represent the flag and the plan that's referenced as the approved wetland boundary. Okay, Brian, so you'll be, anything? You'll be, you'll be issuing an, an order of resource area delineation. That's what I was looking for, order of resource. Brian, anything to add? Uh, no, no further comment. Questions from the board, Alyssa. David, does that impact anything if they don't have the flag going out to the end, I mean, does it impact anything if they decide to put a part a driveway in or whatever? I mean, um, it, it I will if they propose to do anything over there. Then we will have to revisit that. So, but their their intent is not to do anything over there. So, therefore, that's why they didn't include that. But, but if they if they do, then yes, we will have to come back and reevaluate this before they. Wouldn't it be just as easy to put another two flags in? Um. Potentially, but again, that's their call to make. We can't force them to do it. They okay. chose to represent the plan this way. And so we just have to recognize it and prove it in that way. Okay. David? No questions. Mary? It will be written in that, that way that the line ends there and the other area will not be touched. Unless that's we correct. Finish. All right. Jim? Carol. No questions. Ron. No questions. Sandy. No questions and stop falling down on that one. Um, so is there anybody on the line like to speak for or against this particular project? Hearing none. I like to make a motion to close. Someone make a motion to close the hearing. Move. Second. I have a motion and a Jim by second it. All in favor, Alyssa? Yes. David? Yes. Mary? Yes. Jim? Yes. Sandy? Yes, the hearing is closed. I need a motion for an order of resource delineation. So moved. <laughs> Next. And I have a motion and a second. All in favor, Alyssa? Yes. David? Yes. Mary? Yes. Jim? Yes. Sandy? Yes. We're done. So I guess, right, it's next step is up to you. Great. Thank you very much. Have a great night. Thank night. You. night. Next one is a Stephen Ramsey. Anybody here for this particular project? Um, yes, they are on the line. I'm just going to bring this plan up here. So hold on a moment. <coughs> Let 
Why did we continue it? Oh, no, DEP. I'm sorry, I see my notes. Steve I, and Mary, I saw you on the line. Are you still on the line? Yes. Okay. Can you hear? Yeah, we can hear you. Yep, we got gotcha. you. Okay, David. Um, this project site is at 118 and 120 Pinehurst Drive, and the project involves the construction of a garage and the reconstruction of a deck in the buffer zone to a coastal bank, which is a seawall at this site. Um, a 28 by 28 foot garage is proposed, and this would be um, approximately 30 feet from the top of the coastal bank. Um, there's an existing concrete pad between the seawall and the proposed garage that is to be removed. And it's also proposed to reconstruct an, an existing deck um, at this site. There's no grade changes proposed and there will be a new crushed shell driveway proposed to um, accommodate the new garage or to approach the new garage. Uh, erosion control would be installed between the work and the resource area. We had continued this hearing at the last meeting because we did not have the DEP file number, uh, which we now have received. Um, so I would recommend the approval of the project with the issuance of the order of conditions with the standard conditions and again the added conditions that um, all material be kept on the upland side of the work site. Okay, Steve, anything to add? No, I don't believe so other than the deck is not reconstructed. I am, I'm just going to put a new surface on it. It's an existing concrete. Um, so I just want to put a new like a tile, some type of tile on top of it. That's right. I, no, no demolition, no nothing. Right. Okay. Questions from the board, Alyssa. So when I was there, a question was, um, I know you're going to put electricity to the garage. Are you putting water to the garage? I have water on the house there, but I probably would like to get hot and cold water because I probably have a shop there is my intent at some purpose, um, at some point at least. And it's a two two story garage. Correct. And will you be putting in a bathroom there? No. Thanks. Hey. David. No questions. Mary. No questions. Jim. No questions. Carol. No <clears throat> questions. Ron. Uh, no questions. Sandy, no questions. Is there anybody in the line that likes to speak for or against this project? Hearing none. Motion to close. I have a motion to close the hearing. Second. Second by Jim. All in favor, Alyssa? Yes. David? Yes. Mary? Yes. Jim? Yes. Sandy? Yes, the hearing is closed. Thank you. We, we, we still haven't, uh, I need someone to make a motion for the standard order of conditions and all material is to be kept on the upland. I need that motion. Yeah, I will make a motion that we- I have a motion. That we, yep. Second. I heard a second. All in favor, Alyssa? Yes. David? Yes. Mary? Yes. Jim? Yes. Sandy? Yes. So, Steve, you got the project before you start anything. Work with Mr. Bichette on it. Standard conditions. Did we say that, Sandy? Yes, we did. I, I made a motion. I said I need a motion for standard I order of conditions. All materials on the and that was what you motioned and Jim seconded. Okay, so Steve, you work with Dave before you start anything. Fine. I guess all right. Thank you. Now the next one is Cabral. Um that 
is um, a request for continuance um, to a month away, not to the next meeting. So that would be October 21st. Move that we. Yep. Can can I move that we postpone this this um, project until the twenty first of October? I have that motion. Second. I have a second. Before we vote, I need to ask: Is there anybody in the line that would like to speak for or against this project? Hearing none, I like. I'm going to take um, count. Sorry, Alyssa, do you, to, to continue to the 21st. Okay, Alyssa. Yes. David. Yes. Mary. Yes. Jim. Yes. Sandy. The hearing is continued until October 21st. Okay. Next, enforcement orders. Um, these two are on the line just for in case there's any updates or questions. Um, the first one, those folks are in the process of um, getting an application submitted for some of the work after the fact. And I don't know if commission members had a chance to get out and take a look at that one, um, because I think that was one of the things we had talked about maybe was having members go give that one a look. Where was that, David? That was 5 Johnson Street in the Oakdale area. Okay. Anything on Mr. Keegan? Um, I have been in touch with um, the town's attorney and he is going to start the process of taking legal action um, regarding that site to um, get that in front of um, the court to have some action taken formally um, at that level. But that is gonna require a little bit of time uh, for him to prepare the paperwork on that. So I'm going to probably leave that off the um, agenda for the next meeting because I don't think it'll be ready by then. And I'll bring it back up um, once that has been prepared. Okay, thank you. Um, Next meeting will be the October 7th. We have four applications for uh, appointments and uh, I've invited all four of them for tonight's meeting just so they can hear what goes on. And um, so I will be sending out their application and their explanation as to why they'd like to be part of us so that we can consider interviewing consideration at the uh, seventh meeting. But I do see several of them online right now. Um, I have a, um, Lisa, did you have any issues, questions you might like to ask us tonight? Also see, who else do I see here? Betel, Betel part T, help me with the pronunciation. That's actually Kwame Barty. Kwame Party. No, Barty. Barty with a B. With the B. With the B. So I have your application and I have your explanation and I will share it with the commission. Did you have any questions for us? You've listened to us talk for two hours. Ah, uh, no, ma'am. Um, I did have a quick question, Kwame. I've noticed that. Um, I'm trying to send you emails, or I have been, and I keep getting them kicked back. Are you getting these emails or no? Yes. Oh, you are? Okay. Because I keep getting messages saying that these aren't going through. And so, you know, I'm not sure if they're going through, but now I, I hear that they are. So I'm, I, I got to figure out why I'm getting these these messages back uh, on my on my end of this, the line. I can also send you uh, my Gmail account, too because Yahoo is a little uh, long in the tooth. Okay, yeah, yeah. If you send me something that way, I'll have it. Maybe it'll go through more smoothly. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. All right, is there anything? 
Lisa, you, you're still muted. Did you have any questions for us? Um, is not in Bales online? I see, I do have some, we do have some visitors. Whoops. I think they're I think, just, list, they think they're just listening just, in. Okay. So unless somebody has anything else, it's time to say good night. Well, I just wanted to say something. I mean, apparently uh, we had discussion in the last meeting that uh, maybe I could stay on, but apparently I can't stay on as a commissioner because the town bylaws supersede the state uh, laws, I guess. So uh, the next meeting is going to be my last one, I guess. Uh, mm. the, yes. So because I am moving. Uh, even though I'm going three miles away, I can't be a member of this board anymore. So, where are you moving to, Dave? South uh, Carver. Oh, like yeah. two miles away. Yeah, but uh, we we looked into it, and, and apparently uh, I can't I can't stay on. So, uh, and I appreciate Sandy. You sent me a card. Thank you again for that. And I, I appreciate your okay. time here with the commission. But I will be at the next meeting too. Right. Okay. All right. Great. So. We do have one opening as an associate member that I'd like to fill. And then when Dave leaves, we will have a voting member available, but I would prefer to have our associates at least attend a couple more meetings before we move them up, one of them up to a voting position. So we've got one associate to fill and in a month. We'll probably have a second associate to fill, but um, so, that's it. I have nothing else to say. Dave, anything you want to add? Um, no, I don't have anything further to add. But thank Dave. you again for a good show. And Dave, uh, you know, I wish you were sticking around, obviously. But I understand, the, I understand the way things are going. And uh, so best of luck as far as your new location goes. Thank you. Thanks so much. But I'll be, I'll be see you the next meeting, though. So. All okay. right, great. Dave, are you going to be around tomorrow morning? Dave Prashant? Yes, yes. So whoever needs to come in tomorrow to sign things, especially Elisa, um, <laughs> um, that would be wonderful. So yeah, I'll be, be there. I'll be there at 8.30. Until when? Um, probably I'll be there for a good chunk of the morning because I have a lot of paperwork, obviously, to, to try to deal with. So I'll be there at least till, I would say, 10 o'clock, 10.30. Okay, we'll give if, that if, a go. If you have another time that's preferable, just let me know and I'll make sure I'm there when you're going to come. Okay. Are you there on Friday, Dave? I will not be there on Friday. Friday. I work on Friday, that's right. Uh -huh. Yeah. I can't make okay. it tomorrow, but I can make it maybe, maybe Monday then. Yeah, that's fine. If you, if you can't make it tomorrow, Monday's fine. Okay. What's a good time on Monday to see you then? Uh, same time between like 8.30 and 10. Okay. Yeah. Very I, good. I, I'm, I'm going to try to get there by 10. Okay. okay. I, I have a couple of meetings to go to, but I'm, I'm going to give it my best there. Yep, no problem. And like I said, if something changes or another time is preferable, just let me know and I'll just make sure I'm there at that time. Okay. Great. Thanks. Thank you. Good night. Good night. I, I need a up, up, up. Oh, I need a motion. Motion, motion to adjourned. <laughs> and a second. Second. All in favor. Go for it. Aye. All together. Aye. Yes. Aye. Good night, everybody. Thank you very Aye. much. All right. Thank you. Good night. See you later. Wow. Thank you. Kwame.